Good morning, everybody. This is Pastor Pat from Frontier United Methodist Church. It is uh, a privilege and a joy to welcome you to our worship today. This is uh, the worship for the weekend of June 7th, 2020. And, uh, and I, again, thank you for logging in and watching us online whenever you happen to be, uh, to be watching us. Just a, a couple of announcements before we actually begin. I know for, for some of you this isn't going to apply, but uh, we need to make sure that we announce a couple things before we start. First is that we have an all-church meeting coming up on uh, Wednesday night, June the 17th, uh, when we will be discussing the money that we have in our capital fund uh, and whether or not the congregation approves our using that money for uh, the maintenance of the building. So we need to make sure that if you are a member of the church that you log in that day, uh, you will get a, a link sent to you ahead of time Make sure you please log in and and voice your vote. A couple days later, on Sunday, the 21st of June, we are going to try and experiment. Uh, we are going to have drive-in church, not just communion, which we did last, last week, which was a, a huge success, but drive-in church. We're actually going to have a worship experience here in the parking lot at Frontier. Uh, don't worry, if you are an online worshiper, we will still be recording and putting the sermon online for you. But uh, for those who are able and, and desire to come and gather together in our parking lot, uh, we are going to have a worship experience here that morning. So you are certainly all invited to that. Uh, number three is our pre-launch committee, our task force, that is looking at the possibility and all the preparation that's going to have to go into actually opening up worship in the building uh, that is happening on Thursday nights. Uh, we had our first meeting this past Thursday. I felt, thought it went really, really well. But we still would invite you, if you're interested in taking part in our pre-launch uh, meeting and preparation, to let me know, and we will get you uh, a link to join us in that conversation. Number four, our offering has been really good, and we've, we, I, we very much appreciate uh, the generosity of all of you who have uh, sent in monies to help the ministries of the church continue on. The only thing I would say is that if you are using online giving, please make sure that the routing number and the account number that you put in is entirely accurate, because otherwise things don't go quite so well. So please make sure you do that if you are giving online. Next, this is Trinity Sunday. This is uh, the day in our, in our church calendar when uh, we focus in on this characteristic of God, one God in three persons. So for the last six months or so, we've been, uh, we've been talking about the life of Christ. We started off, of course, with the preparation uh, for the incarnation, for Christmas. Uh, we enjoyed that very much, and then we move very quickly into the preparation, the Lenten time, the preparation for the passion of Jesus. And then, of course, the resurrection on Easter Sunday. Um, we moved on to the ascension of Christ up into heaven, and then we talked about how he, when he went up there, uh, to ask his Father to send the Holy Spirit to us last week on Pentecost. This week is kind of that, the culmination of that, of that life that uh, Christ has been leading us towards. It's the, the celebration of Christ's redeeming work as we celebrate the God who, again, is three in one. Now, listen, I know there are pastors around the world that are today going to try to explain to you in about 20 minutes the, the entire uh, complexity of the Trinity. I'm here to tell you it cannot be done. We've had different kinds of analogies and metaphors that we've used over the years. We've talked about how, um, how H2O, you know, is the chemical composition of both ice, water, and steam. And so that's kind of a way to, to think about the three persons of God, but also co-material, the co-material nature of God. 
in three different forms. We talk about how um, a woman who has had children is, uh, goes under three different titles. She is the same woman, but she's also uh, mother, daughter, and, and, and wife. And so we've got the three different titles of, of a woman that, uh, that is the same woman. And that kind of falls short too. We, we talk about this, this chemical reaction that is fire, for example, and the chemical reaction that's going on uh, generates heat and light, and so this, this reaction, heat, light combination is a way to think about the Trinity of God. But again, that falls short too. So all of these attempts to talk about uh, Trinity Sunday and the Trinity, Trinitarian nature of God all of them fall short. What we know is this. The Trinity is an essential doctrine of the church. The presence of God in three different persons allows us to understand the nature of God in three different ways. We see, for example, uh, we see God present, all three persons of, of God present at Jesus' baptism. We see uh, God the Father opening the clouds from heaven. We see the Holy Spirit uh, coming down in the form of a dove and, of course, Christ being, being baptized. We see all three persons of the Trinity there together. We hear Jesus, and we will hear him in a minute in our gospel reading, uh, talk about sending us out as disciples to go out and make disciples and baptize in the name of God who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So this concept goes all the way back to Christ himself. God is one, and we understand him in three different ways. He is... He knows, he loves, and with him all three of those are one. Father, Word, and Spirit, three persons, one God, all equally divine, all absolutely God, one nature, one reality. God is not three beings. God is one, just with three personalities, so that we can interact with God in different ways. That is Trinity Sunday. Uh, that is what we are celebrating today. So I want to begin our worship service here today by reading from the passage I just uh, mentioned here uh, from the Gospel of Matthew. This is chapter 28. We're going to be looking just uh, starting at the very end of uh, verse 16 here. And it says this, Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Will you pray with me? Almighty God, we, your children, come to you again to worship you, to praise you, to give you thanks, and to recognize you for who you are. God, who is our Father, our Creator. God, who is the Son, our Redeemer. God, who is the Holy Spirit, our Sustainer. We come to celebrate all that you are and all that you've done. Lord God, we, we recognize today all of your works in our lives, that, that you in your love sent your Son to come to teach us and to live and die for us. We acknowledge you and give you thanks. We acknowledge that at the Ascension and at, on the Pente day of Pentecost, you sent your, your Holy Spirit to not just to be with us, but to live within us to guide us and strengthen us, and we praise you for that. Lord God, on this day when we lift our hearts and our minds to you, we also lift up all of the pain and the darkness in the world today. We lift it up to you, Lord, because we know that we can't handle it alone. Heck, we can't even handle our own lives alone, 
But with everything going on in the world today, Lord, we know more than ever that we need you. And so we come to you in celebration, but also uh, in a way of petitioning, Lord, that you will play a part in our lives, that we might be a light to a hurting world. Empower us, Lord. Help us to feel your, your presence, your strength, and help us to answer when you call us. Call us to action. Call us to work. Call us to justice. Call us to charity and to love. Lord God, this is the day that you have made. We rejoice and be glad in it. We pray this, this prayer, Lord, in the powerful and holy name of Jesus, our Christ. Hear us now as we lift up the prayer that he taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen and amen. Brothers and sisters, will you join me now as we sing together uh, one of the Trinitarian hymns in our history. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, three persons in one. Let's sing. to be reading our sermon scripture from the book of Genesis today, uh, right at the beginning. So if you've got your Bibles handy, you can flip open to basically page one uh, is where we'll be starting today. It's Genesis 1, 1 to uh, 2, 1 is where we're going to be reading. If you don't have your Bibles with you and you want to go grab one real quick, uh, now would be a good time to pause it, run over and get it, and then, and then come back. Okay, so here we go. Uh, Genesis 1, 1 to 2, 1. It's a little bit long. You've heard it before. Uh, stay with me. Here we go. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. 
God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be a vault between the waters to separate water from water. So God made the vault and separated the water under the vault from the water above it, and it was so. God called the vault sky, and there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the water under the sky be gathered to one place, and let dry ground appear, and it was so. God called the dry ground land, and gathered the waters, and the gathered waters he called seas, and God saw that it was good. And then God said, let the land produce vegetation, seed-bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it, according to their various kinds. And it was so. The land produced vegetation, plants bearing seed according to their kinds, and trees bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them serve as signs to mark sacred times and days and years. And let them be lights in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set them in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening. And there was morning, the, the fourth day. And God said, let the water teem with living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the vault of the sky. So God created the great creatures of the sea, and every living thing with which the water teems, and that moves about in it according to their kinds, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and increase in number, and fill the water in the seas, and let the birds increase on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds, the livestock, the creatures that move along the ground, and the wild animals, each according to its kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. And then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his, in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. And then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds in the sky and all the creatures that move along the ground, everything that has the breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. This is the word of God for the people of God today. Thanks be to God. According to NASA, if we were to look at the universe one split second after the Big Bang, what we would see 
is a 10 billion degree sea of neutrons and protons and electrons and anti-electrons called positrons and photons and neutrinos and all of this as time went on would eventually cool down. The, the universe would cool and eventually all of the elements would, started, would start to form. One thing I find interesting about this time is NASA says that during this initial process, the universe would have been opaque because the free electrons would have caused light to scatter the way sunlight scatters when the water droplets in the, in the clouds refract it. Let there be light, and all was light. In the first four words of our sermon scripture today, in the beginning, God, we find ourselves a split second before that 10 billion degrees C, right there, right then at the beginning of time and the beginning of space. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, the cosmos and everything in it, both material and immaterial, matter and energy, and he created all things ex nihilo, meaning out of nothing. So we're told, in the beginning, God created. We're also told in John 1, and you've probably heard this before, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning, and through Him all things were made. So God, in the beginning, through His Word, created the heavens and the earth like that. And a split second later, the universe was here. But it was a formless sea of light. And if we're able to jump back to Genesis, we find ourselves again, right there and then, we hear that the Holy Spirit of God was hovering over the sea, over the waters, it says. Perhaps it's better understood that the Holy Spirit was present there in creation, sustaining creation, observing it and holding it all together. We see in the scriptures the entirety of the Trinity active and working in this divine creative process. And on this Trinity Sunday, we celebrate the power and glory of the triune God, willing creation into being and then shaping it to be just as God desired, taking it from the chaos of that split second to the order of creation. Albert Einstein said that the most incomprehensible thing about the universe is that it is comprehensible. The universe discloses itself by way of physical theorems and mathematical formulas. God wrote those formulas. God wrote those fundamentals, the laws of physics, the truth of thermodynamics, the conservation of matter and energy. And then, after writing those laws with his word, God lit the match that exploded the cosmos into being. A creation that adhered to the laws that he had written before the beginning, according to his will. And the Holy Spirit keeps all those things constant, sustaining the universe in a comprehensible way so that life is possible. Our life is possible. The story of creation in Genesis 1 is, is clearly a wonderful statement of God's almighty cosmic power that is beyond anything that we creatures can possibly fathom. But it is also an analogy for the life that we all face. Vince Lombardi, arguably the greatest football coach of all time, used to start every season by gathering his players at practice and stating to them, gentlemen, this is football. 
And then they would practice. But they wouldn't practice plays. They would practice fundamentals, like tackling and blocking and getting down into a three-point stance, something as simple as that. And these, these men had been playing this game since the time as they were kids, since they first picked up a football. They, they didn't need, they thought, to learn how to tackle. They didn't need, they thought, to learn how to block. But you see, those players weren't, uh, there's no guarantee that they had ever played together before. Some spoke a different language, calling different plays by different, uh, by different lingo. But some of them had learned to block with their hands in versus hands out. Some of them had learned to tackle with their right shoulder focused on the waist instead of uh, with their left shoulder focused on the knees. Everybody had learned a little bit differently. And so Vince Lombardi took the chaos that was this team and brought it into order by starting with the fundamentals. Our life is sometimes a jumbled, chaotic mess, and we too need to focus on the fundamentals. I don't think there's anybody alive here in the first half of 2020 that would argue with the fact that life right now is a jumbled, chaotic mess. In just the last 90 days, we have really been hammered, I have to admit it. From COVID and lockdowns to murder hornets to injustices and riots and everything else. But beyond that, there hardly seems to be anything that we can count on anymore. Common sense has been thrown out the window long ago. There's nothing that can be objectively described as truth. That's what society tells us. We're even told to ignore facts that are right in front of us so that we can get along in the world without too much trouble. But out of that chaos comes new creation. Jesus, the Word of God in which all things were created, tells us that He is making all things new. And just like God wrote the laws, the fundamentals that govern the natural world, God also wrote the laws that govern our hearts. We are a new creation, which just like the creation formed in Genesis 1, emerges from what seems like chaos. Each one of us, created with a Christ-centered purpose, truth, and meaning that when brought together and shaped by God, transforms us, but we're in chaos. So what do we do? We go back to the fundamentals, the natural laws that were written by God on our hearts. And those fundamentals, faith, hope, and love. You see, in love, God created us. By faith, the Son redeemed us. Through hope, the Holy Spirit is calling to us, guiding us, sanctifying us, transforming us. Our hearts, our minds, and shaping us into the image of God. An image, by the way, that is fundamentally based on the Trinitarian concept of God as one loving community. Three persons in one. So our transformation, this recreation, to use the words of Christ, is coming. It's happening. But it's not easy. The work is challenging. It's hard for us, flawed humans that we are, to live in the image of God as a community of loving, interdependent people. And by the way, our society tells us we shouldn't be interdependent. We should be strong on our own. But God tells us that we are made in the image of God that is an interconnected, interdependent community of love. Now sometimes God blesses individuals with identities or calls them into actions that other people of faith find difficult. Difficult to understand, difficult to nurture. 
And sometimes church members do, frankly, horrible things to one another or to people in the world. Sometimes these transitions that individuals make through, the life, through their life cycle are not made easily, easily or willingly, but they are all part of the process from chaos to order from our wills for our lives to God's will for the world. Now, by the way, if it makes you feel any better, uh, we're not the only ones to have experienced grand-scale chaos in our lives. Just like each one of us is going through something now, the chosen people of God, Israel, has gone through the exodus gone through the exile, gone through their own uh, chaos of moving into the promised land and having to deal with all kinds of, of nations and peoples all around them who, who had in their minds to continue the chaos to push them back out again. And then we've got the disciples. The chaos of losing their, their rabbi, their Messiah, not knowing what was going to come. Chaos. Go through the scriptures. There's, there's plenty of examples. But in each example, God brings order out of the chaos. And God can bring order to the chaos that we're experiencing. Both personally and in the world. Because remember, the universe that we see today didn't calm down from chaos overnight and all at once. It took time, and it happened one neutron, one electron at a time. Into each of our stories, our personal stories, of jumbled, chaotic mess, the voice of God is speaking. And God is saying something like, Gentlemen, this is football. Because we too need to get back to the fundamentals. We have to, uh, to focus in on what those laws are that were written on our hearts. Faith, hope, and love. And that's our good news for the day. That God, three persons in one, is with us, speaking light and life and love and hope into the murky and jumbled and chaotic mess of the world. In fact, there's often in the chaos itself where God is at work, happening profoundly at work. If only we'll look for it. So when life feels messy, look for the signs of God hard at work. Look for the light of God shining brightly on your path ahead. Listen for God's voice speaking new creation into being. And forming and transforming the community of love that is the church and should be the world. Will you pray with me? Lord God, we again give you thanks for the gift of this place. Not just this church, not just this state or this country, but the, the gift of creation. And we thank you for not leaving us alone, but transforming us in our lives all along the way. Continue, dear God. Continue to, to shape us even when it hurts a little. Continue to, to mold us, redeem us, create us anew, transform us, sanctify us, that we might live in a loving community with each other, but also with you, the God who is loving community all by himself. Be with us now and every day. And all praise and honor is yours. Almighty God, forever and ever. Amen. Will you join me now as we sing our second song of the, of the day, How Great is Our God.
receive this benediction. Lord God, again, I acknowledge you as the giver of all good things, and I pray that you will continue to bless all those who can hear my voice. Lord God, rain your blessings down upon us that we might remember that you love us, that Jesus our Christ lived, died, and rose for us, and that the Holy Spirit lives within us and guides and strengthens us every day. I pray, Lord, your blessing on the world. I pray your peace. I pray your comfort for those who have lost loved ones. And I pray that you will be a light that shines into the darkness, the darkness of the world, the darkness of our hearts. And I pray this in the name of Jesus, our Messiah, our Christ. Amen and amen. Have a great week. I hope to see you here uh, next week. Be blessed.